Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Jeskai Colored Urza deck featuring both Lord Protector as well as Prince of Krug, which started out as a 4 of as the main build round card in the deck, voted on by my supporters on Patreon, but as I kept fine-tuning the deck I dropped the numbers down to 2, although it's still very impactful if you can play it and it sticks around. A 2-3 saying artifact creatures you control get plus 2 plus 2, and for 6 mana we can activate it, creating a token that's a copy of target artifact we control, except it's a 1-1 soldier creature in addition to its other types, so it will also still get that plus 2 plus 2 bonus, so it will be a 3-3 three, three at the very least. And fun things we can do with Urza include copying the Might Stone and Weak Stone, which when it enters will once again be able to either draw 2 or give a creature minus 5 minus 5, also taps for double colorless, and this is a card we need to meld with Urza, Lord Protector, which we can do as early as turn 5 in this deck, turn 3 play Urza, thanks to the artifact discount we can play a 4 mana, Might Stone and Weak Stone, and then on turn 5 tap this for double colorless, and then we can meld using the 7 mana ability and get Urza Planeswalker in play, which can usually take over the game. And then we can also potentially copy Portal to Phyrexia with our Prince of Krug, a 9 mana artifact, which is quite pricey, but we can also potentially ramp into it using the 2 mana from Might Stone and Weak Stone, which just cannot be spent to cast non-artifact spells, which is a convoluted way of saying we can still cast artifacts with it, and we can also still activate abilities like the one from Urza Lord Protector, so ramping into expensive artifacts is just fine. And then once the portal enters the battlefield, the opponent will have to sacrifice 3 creatures, and at the beginning of our upkeep we can put a creature card from any graveyard onto the battlefield under our control, so that's also maybe a way to get back an Urza that the opponent answered earlier, and then still meld it thanks to our Might Stone and Weak Stone. So Urza has a ton of synergy throughout the deck, including the 5 mana prototype form of Skitterbeam Battalion, which will make a 2-2 with Trample and Haste, that is joined by 2 tokens with those same abilities. So turn 4 Urza, turn 5 play a 2-2 Battalion, which will still add up to 12 power and toughness of Trample and Haste, that can hit the opponent right away. And then later in the game, if we ever get to 9 mana, we can cast its bigger form, which is a 4-4 joined by 2 4-4 tokens with Trample and Haste as well. Not necessarily the best to copy with Urza, since if we copy it we don't get those extra tokens, since those only happen if we cast the Battalion, but the plus 2 plus 2 is still very impactful, and thanks to Haste the opponent may not see it coming. And then looking throughout the rest of our deck, we have more early creatures to help us ramp into all these big expensive plays, including three copies of the Enthusiastic Mechanaut, giving all artifact spells a one mana discount, also an artifact creature itself, so it turns into a 4-4 flyer with Prince of Krug in play, and can help us cast maybe a turn 4 Mindstone and Tweakstone, similar to Urza Lord Protector. Then we've got three copies of Sten Paranoid Partisan, which when it enters can either name Artifact or sometimes Planeswalker in this deck to give those a one mana discount as well. And then three copies of the Reality Chip as another cheap legendary creature. And all these legendary creatures are also important to enable our Relic of Legends, which can tap for one mana of any color. And we can also tap an untapped legendary creature we control, adding once again a one mana of any color. So Relic can give us a significant mana boost in addition to potentially fixing our mana as well, since we are a three color deck after all. And all these ramp artifacts also play very well with Teferi, who slows the sunset. And we're mainly focusing on the plus one ability we can choose up to one target artifact, up to one target creature, and up to one target land, and we can untap the chosen permanence we control while tapping the chosen permanence we don't control, as well as a gain to life. So what we usually want to set up with Teferi is having either a Relic of Legends or better yet a Might Stone and Weak Stone that we get to untap. So now the Might Stone and Weak Stone can make 4 mana with Teferi untapping it. Then we can also untap a land with Teferi, so that's plus 1 mana. And then if we also happen to have both a Relic of Legends and a Legendary Creature in play, one of our many different Legendary Creatures, we can untap those after having tapped them with a Relic for 1 mana. So that's plus 1 mana there as well. So you can see how quickly the extra mana starts adding up with Teferi so that can help us double spell early on, and then in the late game can even potentially play Urza and meld it in the same turn, and the opponent may not expect it. 
And then we also have four copies of the Combat Thresher, another prototype creature can be played for three mana as a 1-1 one -one with double strike that draws when it enters. So turn three Thresher also sequences nicely into a turn four Urza as we'll be attacking with a 3-3 three -three double strike. And then later in the game we can also maybe copy it with Prince of Krug to make additional copies which will once again draw a card when they enter. And then we also have a single copy of Sahili, which can maybe make some hasty Thopter tokens with a minus two, or draw additional cards with the plus one. And all these legendary cards we can also easily cast thanks to our Plaza of Heroes. So this functions kind of as a three color land. The only card Plaza doesn't help us cast early on is an enthusiastic Mechonaut, which needs blue and red. And then the prototype forms of our various artifact creatures. Otherwise it helps us cast all the various legendary creatures and even planeswalkers, and can also be later activated to maybe protect one of those key creatures by giving it hexproof and indestructible until end of turn and then uh, yeah the rest of our mana base pretty straightforward lots of dual lands including a good mix of the pain lands and then the innistrand dual lands so we can still play our two drops on curve but also not take too much damage later in the game so that's always a tricky balance to strike sadly no trial land like we have in the grixis colors for instance and then a few channel lands as well with soaring city and Iganjo, which also get a nice discount from controlling legendary creatures so we can often channel them for pretty cheap and then just a one basic land in case of an opposing field of Ruin or Boseju. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw and our hand seems keepable. Turn 3 Relic ramps into maybe a turn 4 Mightstone and Weakstone. And then we'll lead with our Sundown Pass. So we can maybe play our Blue Red to drop on turn 2 if needed. Opponents on the Blue Red themselves is going to cast to Consider. Opponent passes with two mana up, and there's the Mechonaut. So let's play that here. Even if it dies, we can still play a Relic next turn. But can maybe help out in uh, casting our nine mana Battalion ahead of schedule. I'm sure opponent has a burn spell here. It's gonna be a Flame Blast Bolt. And then another consider. Opponent could be a hot agent style of deck. In which case counter spells are going to be pretty tough when trying to resolve all these expensive cards. Could see a fable on three. But opponent passes. Okay, let's give this uh, relic a chance. Would be nice alongside Teferi. Opponent's going to make it disappear. Alright, so next turn we have the choice of two Planeswalkers. Sahili versus Teferi. Teferi sets up our Mightstone and Weakstone a bit better. Although both will be under pressure from the Tolarian Terror now. Teferi goes up to five loyalty, so it would still die. So I guess we'll make two Thopters with Sahili. Which will buy us some time. Like making masterpieces is hard? And then we can actually kill the Tolarian Terror with the Mightstone and Weakstone, since the artifact itself can pay for ward once it's in play. So we'll trump. And it's going to be an Iconoclast next. Okay, sadly we did not find the land we needed, but we can maybe still draw into it with Sahili. Even though it probably means losing Sahili next turn. Opponent is going to respond to the plus by bouncing the Thopter. That's too bad. And there's a land, so we'll keep that on top. And then I could play Teferi. It's not going to really accomplish a whole lot. So maybe play our Partisan naming Artifact. I'm okay trading stun for the Iconoclast if I get the chance. But an Obliterating Bolt will take care of it. So things aren't going great, but if we can resolve Mightstone and Weakstone, dealing with the Tolarian Terror is great, and then can help us ramp towards Battalion. I 
let you down, friend. And another tolerator, yeah. So let's see if this works out. Okay, so tower down. Still facing nine damage here. So if opponent has another counter spell available, it's gonna be tough. Hot Gen 6 4. And we don't have any sweepers we can count on. So what's the best I can do here? So I could play Might Stone and Tweak Stone killing Hot Gen, and then still play a 5 mana battalion afterwards. That's probably the move here. And stay back. And then we'll need to ferry to find some more action. Our opponent can't have too many counter spells left in hand given that they tapped out for Hoddy Jin. Bolt deals with one token. So we can chump terror. Maybe trade for Iconoclast here, still take two. Alright, opponent's only sending the Tolarian Terror. There's Urza. So, what's the move now? Teferi, I can plus and then still play Urza to get an extra blocker in play. Gain some life. The minus, I'm not sure what it needs to find here to help out. And then next turn, Urza can help us uh, transform and maybe pull ahead. Don't quite have the mana to transform now, so we'll pass and hope we get to meld Urza. Still going to be an uphill battle. As our opponent goes digging with Impulse. Another Obliterating Bolt would deal with Urza. Opponent sends Tolarian Terror and a bunch of 1-1s. All face, it seems. Okay, so Trump Terror. Question is whether we block a 1-1 and lose Urza to a Lightning Strike. I feel like if they had a lightning strike, what happens if they attacked with all? I block Iconoclast, I would just be dead. So I don't think they can have it here. So we get to untap. And yeah, let's get melding. Uh, playing Relic first is pretty much free since Urza can tap for mana as well. That point's going to make disappear with casualty, so we would have to pay 4 mana. Let's say we pay 4, then I still have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so yeah, I think we can still pay for this. And meld. I'll humor a battle. The data might be useful. Let's say we just make a whole bunch of one ones. My army never tires. Two more pieces fall into place. So we can chump Tolarian Terror pretty easily now. And at 7 loyalty, it's not going to be easy for our opponent to burn out Ursa, and our opponent concedes. Wow, what a game. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands could be okay. Relic ramps into maybe a turn 4 Might Stone and Tweak Stone, and Teferi is good with both. Opponent on Grixis. And yeah, against Grixis, probably better to avoid playing too many creatures, since they're going to die anyway. But it looks like our opponent is on a sacrifice variant. Okay, probably still worth it to play reality chips since that will make mana with 
a Relic of Legends as well. So next turn Relic, hopefully Mightstone and Weakstone to follow up. And a portal to Phyrexia is something exciting to ramp into, even though it's probably not the best at defeating an Oni Cult Anvil. Fable on three, always good. And could play an Urza soon as well. Okay. So, is there a sequence next turn where I can play a Teferi as well? I guess we could go Teferi and Urza. If we forego the Mightstone and Weakstone. Another Anvil. And they can use a treasure from the Shaman to start making 1-1s. One Even if we can block the Shaman itself. At least the Fairy can gain some life as well. Opponent's got a Voltage Surge to finish off a Reality Chip. They would have been able to kill it regardless. Okay, so now do we just Might Stone kill Shaman? That seems reasonable. Slow down their artifact development, although we'll still have the Anvil with the current constructs to keep draining us. So maybe I'm better off drawing to make sure I hit my land drops to get to Portal eventually. Could also go Urza plus Comma Thresher and just make some blockers here. Maybe that's even better. And then we'll find out soon enough if Urza survives. And then I'll take the one extra damage to keep Urza as a blocker for the Shaman token. Backup Urza could help as well. Alright. And if we get to untap with Urza, it's going to be easier to maybe double spell with Teferi since Urza makes mana with Relic. And two mana if we untap it with Teferi, basically. Sahili is a good one, so that's probably the reason they're splashing blue. Good plus to draw, and then next turn pump the team. I'll block the Shaman. Again, if they have a Voltage Surge, they can always play it kicked to deal four damage. Sahili will plus. Think swift like a Felidar. And our point's good on a braid to finish off Urza instead. Well, that one I guess we could have prevented by not blocking. Although it could have also taken out Relic, which probably would have been worse. If I play Urza, I can still play Teferi. So that's probably the play. And then if Teferi untaps Urza, Relic, and Land, I'm still one short of casting Mightstone and Weakstone. So do we prefer Mightstone and Weakstone then, killing Reflection or drawing two? Next turn, Sahili can minus four, pumping all the 1-1s. So Teferi will be under quite a bit of pressure. Yeah, when in doubt, killing Reflection is probably not a bad idea. And then, yeah, hope Urza survives so we can melt next turn. Ah, Pwn found another Voltage Surge to kill Urza, sadly. So we don't get to live the dream quite yet. And our opponent's got a lot of tokens here, so Portal to Phyrexia is not going to be as effective as we would like it to be. Definitely trading points on empty at least, but triple anvil is going to add up very quickly. And actually we'll need a land to play portal still, now that we lost Urza. 
There it is. And then I should be able to play Teferi first as well. Or do I? I guess, no, we cannot since we lost our legendary creature. So it only makes three mana. So yeah, just play Portal and then we're still in trouble. At least they cannot use Anvil to basically sacrifice in response, and they still need to sacrifice creatures afterwards. But we're going to take six, and then at least three more. And then Portal can maybe bring back Urza to meld. So that's our plan. Down to six we go. Virtual three life. Hope they didn't find an abrade. And then they get to make a fresh batch of tokens. Okay, I think Urza is probably our best bet here. And our opponent might have found a Voltage Surge to kill it here. And we can only activate Urza as a sorcery, so that's not good enough. Found different Urza. Okay, so we can play Urza and use a 6-man ability copying Portal to Phyrexia. And I should do it now before Anvil triggers. And can I play Teferi in the meantime? If I play Teferi, it can untap my Son and Weakstone, Urza, and a land, so it should be mana neutral. And the extra life gain could certainly help. And yeah, let's just copy Portal now. Could also copy Mindstone and Weakstone, but this seems better. Opponent sacrifices three more creatures. And now we get to return two creatures each turn, so... Thrasher, Urza, Reality Chip are all fair game. Okay, big top deck for opponents. Can they find an answer? Now Teferi gaining life should be able to offset the Anvils and her opponent explodes. Awesome! Urza, Prince of Krug to the rescue. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and has potential. Missing red for Mechanaut at the moment. But can still play Chip and Urza. And then Iganjo can be channeled for pretty cheap once we have all these legendaries in play. Might have been better off not playing Plaza in case we do want to play Mechanaut first. For now, Reality Chip. And Relic of Legends coming up, that's exciting. That will also make the red mana for Mechanaut. Opponent on black aggro with a Reckoner Raid. So how does our next turn look like? Might still be better off playing Urza. And then turn after a Relic into more things. Although if I play Relic I could still play Mechanaut. So maybe that's the move here, Relic into Mechanaut. Misery's Shadow could attack past a Reality Chip. Although Iganjo can take care of it as well. So what if we want to leave up Iganjo mana? Is there any way of doing that? I guess play Relic. And then yeah, I could still channel Iganjo. So maybe that's the move. Block with Reality Chip, make them pump Shadow. And then waste their entire turn essentially. Since we can channel Iganjo for 2 mana. And Chip can tap for mana as well. So hopefully they attack first. If they go for a different line, then we might regret not committing something else to the board. Opponent attacks. We'll block. And yeah, opponent's going for it. So we want to respond to the second pump. So the four damage is going to be enough. Since they can pump again, but then it's still a 4-4. And yeah, there we go. Get to untap, and that was a big swing. So, let's say we play Urza. 
Then I can play Mechanauts and a 1 mana Thresher. That sounds good. And a portal to Phyrexia coming up, and we're pretty close to casting it. It's going to get a 2 mana discount. We have 2 Legends. So 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, we can already cast it next turn. So Praetor, not a problem. And I guess we'll double block like so. Should have probably left Urza untapped as opposed to Reality Chip, but that's okay. There's a portal. And I don't see Mono Black recovering from this. Can maybe reconfigure Chip and then start playing off the top. Could play a 7 mana Thresher. And yeah, opponent scoops it up. Portal too strong. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand is missing some uh, curve toppers here, but I guess we could always save Thresher for 7 mana instead. But uh, yeah, Relic of Legends can be such a powerful card if we draw some legendaries that I'm willing to keep. And uh, we'll have to decide what to do on turn 3 up against Esper. And Sten is a nice pickup. Still gonna play Relic first. And then next turn we should be able to double spell. No turn 3 Rafine, it seems. Teferi's nice. Opponent could of course have some counter spells in hand. In which case, going for two spells this turn is gonna be a little bit better. So how about we play Sten... And then we could still technically play Teferi afterwards. I think we're still naming Artifact instead of Planeswalker, though. And then play another Relic. Play Comet Thresher for two. That point's going to march. And yeah, I didn't even get the chance to respond to make mana with Relic of Legends here. Which is unfortunate, since if I made mana I would have still been able to play Thresher. So, I guess hopefully it'll actually benefit us if we cast it for 7. Now, if I play Teferi, they won't be able to make it disappear. So we'll start there. And then I can still play Mechanaut plus maybe a Thresher afterwards. So let us untap. Play Mechanauts. And our opponent's gonna cast a Deluge now. So it seems like more of a traditional control deck as opposed to a mid range Rafine deck. So we do have to watch out for Farewell. That's definitely a concern. Although there's not much we can do about it. Probably minus to ferry next turn to try and find some might stone and weak stone. Just a sunset revelry. Make two one ones gain for life. And our opponent's gonna exile the mechanaut. Fair enough. There's a might stone and weak stone. I don't think I have the mana to play everything and transform. Even though Teferi untapping it certainly helps with that. So step one, I guess Mycen and Tweakstone draw. And then I might be able to save Urza and then play it in the same turn where we transform it so we don't expose it to sorcery speed removal. If I were to play a land, I have three, four, five with Urza, six, seven, eight. 9 mana, plus 10 with a land, so I think we actually can play Urza and transform here. And then tap this for 2, tap Urza for mana. 
plus one. And transform. Wow, that's impressive. And now a farewell is going to be a lot less effective. Urza can make a bunch of one ones, can draw. I guess we'll just go digging. And keep maybe a backup Urza. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, double Planeswalker in play. And out of nowhere, almost, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And what about this one? Plaza is a little bit of a nombo with Mechanaut, so we can't actually play that on turn two. And without a turn two Mechanaut, this hand kind of falls apart. So I'm afraid I'll have to mulligan. This has the same Mechanaut problem, but we can just get rid of it, keep... Might turn with Urza. And a reality chip is something we can play early on. Land is good. So we can play Urza into turn four Might Stone and Tweak Stone, and we'll see if our opponent can answer it. Could also play a Teferi in the meantime. Opponent on Grixis. Turn two Harvester. Okay, let's give Urza a try. Cut down doesn't work by itself, but they could shrink down Urza with Harvester and then cut it down. Either way, we get to play Teferi next turn, which is still pretty good. Go for the throat, does answer Urza. But also threw off the opponent's curve, so they maybe couldn't play Fable of the Mirror Breaker here. Alright, looks like a Voltage Surge also would have been able to take care of Urza. Kills a reality chip, but there's another one coming up. So play to fairy, and then we want to plus. So it hopefully gets to untap and play a might stone and weak stone next turn. And that can maybe answer a shield root that the opponent could play here. Yep. So that's all according to plan. Sadly, Teferi will die to the Harvester, but a portal to Phyrexia could be nice to ramp into with a Might Stone and Weak Stone. So let's make a mana. And yep, Reality Chip is not going to get cast here, unfortunately, if only we had a Relic of Legends in play. Yeah, if the fairy got to untap, then Might Stone making four mana could have been enough for portals since the fairy also untaps a land. So we'll have to wait for that. You just let me know if you're up for round two. But we still have six mana. Another harvester is fine. Only one blood token, so not enough to kill reality chip. And we can also protect it with plaza. This is land seven, basically. Another land on top. So we're getting very close to portal. Just need to hold out a little bit longer. Although knowing we're drawing a land means next turn we're also not doing anything. Finding a creature to reconfigure onto with reality chip would also help. They still have a blood token that they can turn into a better card if they are flooding. And then of course our opponent could have counter spells in hand as well. And this looks like maybe an Invoke Despair. Or a Serpent, yeah. Blade Coil Serpent is going to make us discard, so goodbye Portal. And that's our entire game plan. So now our chances are not looking so great. Can block Harvester at least, but we're taking 9, drawing a land. And we don't really have a great game plan going forward. Another land on top, so that would have cast Portal, but it's going to be too late here. Yeah, the new Blade Coil Serpent, a great addition for the Grixis deck. I highly recommend it if you haven't tried it yet. Ok, 
can block Harvester. We know we're drawing a land, so... I guess the best I can do is Chump Serpent, but then I'm still taking 6, so it doesn't make a difference, really. My Gancho at least could have taken out a Blade Coil. But uh, yeah, that's GG's. And Grixis remains one of the best decks as standard. And Jeskai also does not get to play with any of the tri lands, which uh, yeah does make it a bit worse as a three-color deck compared to Grixis. And there's an Invoke Despair to finish us off. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand could use a third land, especially white mana, but I'm not going to turn down Urza plus Mightstone and Weakstone in our opening hand. And at least a reality chip to maybe block an early attacker. Okay, that can also help. Yeah, I guess we'll try out the uh, Mechanaut here. We can now play one mana reality chip. Opponents with Mardu colors, so you can expect lots of removal. And a wedding announcement on three. There's the white mana, perfect. So I could already play Urza. Or we could go Comet Thresher to draw, since I need to find a fourth land as well. But sure, we'll try it out here. It's the more mana efficient play. As a 2-4, at least it survives cutdown. So it's going to be a Rite of Oblivion to take care of it instead. You can also answer the artifact here. Okay, so I can play Sten and still play Reality Chip, and then we can play 3 mana Mightstone and Tweakstone next turn. Naming Planeswalker also an option. But we have more artifacts in hand. Land coming up. And the rest can take away maybe Teferi here. And the Graveyard Trespasser is fine. Okay, so we get to play our Mightstone and Weakstone. Probably just drawing cards. And uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. So if I reconfigure Reality Chip right now, I won't be able to play the land off the top. Tempting to play a 5-mana Thresher next turn, however. So maybe I'll reconfigure Reality Chip now. And then hit for 2 since I'm not really planning to block. And then next turn we could have a very explosive turn. Can even play Battalion. And we'll take the hits. Possible I was better off reconfiguring onto Sten. Although we might end up flickering it at some point. Opponent just goes for reality chip itself. That's fine. And yeah, we can uh, play a 7 mana battalion. That sounds good. And that should be lethal. Alright, so yeah, we got to see our Jeskai Urza deck in action, and while we didn't see a whole lot of the Prince of Krug, it can certainly add up quickly, especially with a Battalion, so that's one direction you could further explore, good with a Thresher as well, and eventually once you start copying Mightstone and Weakstone or Portal to Phyrexia, you can completely take over the game, but that's also the drawback of not playing a full playset, but I think it's a pretty tricky balance to strike, since the Prince of Krug, when played on turn 4, often gets removed before you get a chance to activate it, so it tends to be much better in the late game once you can play and activate it in quick succession, but if you only want to draw it late game, you also tend to avoid it as a 4-off, otherwise you're too likely to draw it early when it's not at its best. 
But uh, yeah, if we want to see Urza, Prince of Krug in action a little bit more, I'll be featuring it in an upcoming Historic Brawl video as the commander, so we should be able to see the six-man ability a little bit more there. And uh, yeah, overall the thoughts on this Jeskai Urza deck seems like a fun deck with potential, but I wouldn't recommend it, at least not in its current form, for the ranked ladder, since games tend to be pretty long and grindy, which is not optimal if you're just looking to level up. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.